I feel like most people know about the classic Linda Carter Wonder Woman TV series, and of course pretty much everyone is aware of the current iteration of Wonder Woman played by Gal Gadot, but there is another Wonder Woman. The Wonder Woman who wasn't. In 2011, Warner Brothers created a pilot for a Wonder Woman TV series starring Adrienne Palicki. And after NBC viewed the pilot that they had requested, they said, no thank you. Every couple years, especially with the current resurgence in popularity for Wonder Woman, someone will write an article about this failed pilot. And every so often, it will get uploaded online and then quickly taken down. Let me tell you, this thing would have had an amazing cast. Elizabeth Hurley, uh, Wesley from The Princess Bride, Edward Herman, who played Richard Gilmore on Gilmore Girls, Pedro Pascal, and I've always thought to myself, man, this thing must have been truly terrible to not get picked up. So, of course, I'd always wanted to see it. And now I have. Let's discuss. The episode starts with this boy named Willis excitedly running home because he got a college letter in the mail. But I'm assuming the house that he runs to is where he lives, since he's calling for his mom. But then where did he get the letter? Why didn't it get delivered to the house where he lives? Like, where did it come from? And Willis's family is experiencing a very intense level of anxiety over this letter. Like, his mom sounds angry. Open it. What are you trying to kill me? Open it. Oh, come on, Willis. All right, all right, all right. Don't rush me, okay? Open it. Angry with hope? I, I don't know. Fortunately, he gets in. What's it say, Willis? What? I got me. Unfortunately, he starts bleeding from his eyeballs for no reason. Oh, Willis. There is a way too long sequence of Willis just bleeding out of his face and his mom screaming, Willis, about 700 times. Willis. So we're off to a strong start here. The next scene brings us our first shot of the titular character, Wonder Woman herself. <laughs> Speaking of titular, the video that I watched was very low quality, so it was hard to tell, but when I looked at pictures of the character's costume, I noticed that one, there must be some serious bounce happening when she runs. And two, that must seriously hurt because there is not a lot of support happening in that outfit. Like, there aren't even straps. We see that Wonder Woman clearly has enhanced speed and strength. And the helicopter reporter notes that the man that she is chasing... But he does appear almost superhuman with his speed. Wonder Woman lassos him, she takes some of his blood, and then she hands him over to police. No, sorry, she slides him over to police. Like this. I do love the accent of the reporter covering this incident. It was fantastic, Rob. Wonder Woman just swooped in. It was fantastic, Rob. You see, this Wonder Woman is a vigilante. She's an anti-hero. She doesn't need to follow the law. She plays by her own rules. 
And she's also the CEO of a multi-million dollar company that funds her crime fighting and seems to primarily produce Wonder Woman merchandise. Upon further scrutiny, it was determined that SalesMart International not be selected as suitable distributors. They have a one-to-one -one current ratio with liabilities likely to rise using our standard. None of this feels like it fits together. People in this world know who Wonder Woman is. They know she's Diana Themyscira of Themyscira Industries. They know about her superpowers and her lasso of truth, and opinion seems to be generally split on whether her form of crime fighting and justice is a good thing or not. Okay, we're talking showboat here. I mean, come on. Obviously, this woman needs some anger management. No question about it. Dr. Phil is not a fan. Wonder Woman also has a secret identity where she has bangs and glasses. Night. Mm -hmm. Could you at least have Diana Themyscira or Diana Prince check in with the infirmary? Will do, Captain. She goes by the name Diana Prince, and she hangs out in her single girl apartment with her cat. Tonight, I am building my Facebook page. They eat chips and watch The Notebook together. And I'm so happy that you're doing this, but you're gonna have a million things to do. Who takes care of this cat when she's not around? Because I imagine being a superhero and a CEO probably takes up a lot of her time. She can become Diana Prince, like, what, every second Tuesday? It takes almost nine minutes for the intro scene with Willis to come back around into the overall plot when Willis's mom shows up at Diana's CEO office. And Diana seems to know about what happened to Willis, but it's not really clear if she and Willis's mom like, know each other. How's Willis? Well, the doctors say there's hope, but uh, he's conscious now. I guess that's good. That could be great. You also learn via dialogue that the guy that Wonder Woman chased down and handed over to police may have been the one who sold Willis some sort of drug that caused his weird aneurysm. He's just a pawn in a much larger network. But I wish you'd killed him. Whoa! If I ever get the chance, I will kill him. They made some bold choices with this mom character, and it did not pay off. Wonder Woman's arch nemesis is Veronica Kale, played by Elizabeth Hurley, who is the CEO of a pharmaceutical company that has been testing drugs that will grow muscle super fast. But they caused Willis Park's heart to nearly explode. Yikes! So why were his eyes and ears bleeding? So Wonder Woman has this press conference to lay out exactly how this company's experimental drugs and supplements are causing heart failure. And then she says, That woman is responsible. But I can't prove it. Girl, that is literally the legal definition of slander. I do like Elizabeth Hurley as a villain. I always really loved her in the movie Bedazzled with Brendan Fraser, where she plays the devil. There are other components of this that I would have liked if they were done just a little bit differently. For example, Wonder Woman's coworker points out that she designed her costume specifically to resemble an action figure in order to sell merchandise to fund her crime fighting. And I don't think that the basis of that idea is necessarily bad. I like the idea of playing off of a Bruce Wayne type of character, except she's a shrewd businesswoman who owns a company that makes a ton of money from merchandising her secret superhero identity, which was carefully crafted to sell stuff and earn a profit. But it's dumb that people know that Wonder Woman is the CEO. And I feel like her company should be maybe a toy company in general or just some other type of company 
rather than a company that specifically sells just Wonder Woman merchandise. By the way, Wonder Woman's breasts become the topic of an entire scene. I know Amazons are endowed with various blessings. We are not this endowed. She and Wesley from The Princess Bride, whose character name I can't remember, argue because apparently the super chesty dolls sell way better than the other dolls. You I never had would have the done idea that. I never said to merchandise my tits. Wonder Woman isn't vulgar. See, this takes me back to thinking about what this show could have been. She's got this carefully crafted Americana superhero personality designed to sell merchandise when really she is this brutal, iron-fisted warrior. Wonder Woman's perfect. Perfect tits, perfect ass, perfect teeth. I mean, look at these teeth. She always does everything right. God forbid she make a mistake. Here's what I would have liked for a plot that exists basically within the same framework that they've created here. Um, I would have liked to see a Wonder Woman superhero who goes around saving kittens from trees and rescuing children from burning buildings. And she's got this sort of gee golly Americana kind of personality. And then in the background, there's all of this Wonder Woman merchandise being sold, and you kind of think that some greedy corporation is just profiting off of her persona. But there's this other kind of super-powered vigilante in town who's like hunting down drug dealers and snapping their necks and beating up criminals, and you think that she is going to be Wonder Woman's main adversary. And then, at the end of the episode, you find out that the super-powered vigilante is Wonder Woman. That this is her real self, and the red, white, and blue persona is just something that was specifically created to drive merchandising and make money. She's not the CEO of the toy company. That would be Wesley from The Princess Bride. He would sort of be like her Alfred, and they would have some sort of deal that she's basically in on. Okay, back to the episode. In the doll scene, Wonder Woman mentions that she's an Amazon. And then later in the episode, another character mentions how she's not human, but they never really detail her backstory and how she came to be here. We do see Steve Trevor in some flashbacks. I guess they were together having a relationship in New York, but she left him to move to LA and do like her whole Wonder Woman shtick. I guess she thought that having loved ones and being Wonder Woman would put them in danger. But wouldn't that be the point of her whole bangs and glasses persona? For me to have loved ones or family, they'd be targeted. My enemies, I mean, they'd be putting you at risk. So Veronica Kale comes to visit Wonder Woman, and Elizabeth Hurley is so sultry. I love it. Veronica Kale. Delighted to finally meet you in the extraordinary flesh. But Wonder Woman wants to see her secret laboratory. And when Veronica Kale asks what's in it for her... I won't kill you. Two things. First, she is directly threatening this woman. I find it hard to believe that if the United States military knew who and where Wonder Woman was, that they would not try to shut her down immediately. Secondly, just the shot, the framing, the background music, everything about this just doesn't feel right. It's not threatening, it doesn't even come off as blasé and cavalier. It just feels really flat. And some of that could be the acting, but I'm pretty sure it's the editing. And then... Did you actually come here to threaten me in some way? Oh, they have way more chemistry than Wonder Woman and Steve Trevor. Like, I forgot there were other characters in that room. 
But the writing is just so bad. The pharmaceutical industry has Congress by the balls. And as I'm sure you can imagine, their balls come particularly easy to me. Then Wonder Woman goes to see Willis in the hospital. I would kind of thought he was dead. And just like it wasn't clear if Wonder Woman knew Willis's mom, it's also not clear if she and Willis actually know each other. Like, he seems surprised to find Wonder Woman at his bedside. For real? Is she you? How you feeling? Uh, I wish I'd broken something so you could sign my cast. But she holds his hand, which to me indicates some type of familiarity. But if I woke up in the hospital after collapsing in my home and found Superman holding my hand, I'd be like, what the f- There's also a scene in the hospital where Wonder Woman towers over a security guard. And that made me realize for the first time, oh, She's tall. And I looked it up, and Adrienne Palicki is 5'11". If you put her in heels or platforms, she easily clears six feet. And that's such good casting. Wonder Woman is an Amazon. She should be tall. So Wonder Woman decides to interrogate the guy that she lassoed and slid over to police earlier in the episode. And there's this weird dialogue dub that's not even the actress's voice. I'm represented by counsel. Yeah, but that's a real comfort at the moment. I'm representing the kid you almost killed. Despite the weird editing, she does give off a really good sense of menace though. I like that she keeps saying his name. Can't be. Can't what? Be here? But I am here, John. Didn't finish talking last night, John. Come on, John. You should just tell me, John. Why don't you just confess, John? The cop she knows, I think his name is Eddie, just lets her do this. When he's down the hall and he hears the guy screaming in pain, he just shakes his head like, oh, you. <laughs> Then there's a bit of conflict, because Wonder Woman gets the intel that she was looking for. The guy tells her that Elizabeth Hurley's character is creating super soldiers in a lab. And Wonder Woman, being Wonder Woman, wants to go and just bust right in. But her cop friend tells her, no, you can't do that. It's not legal process. And he convinces her to wait until they can maybe get the exact same intel through the legal police questioning. But why would Wonder Woman agree to that? Because she's Wonder Woman. And she does what she wants sometimes, but then other times she's willing to work with the police. And her motivation is just not clear. I could invent reasons that would make that make sense, but it's not explained or alluded to in any way in the actual show. It's just all over the place. And then, in the middle of all of this, the show just throws in this dinner scene with a senator played by Edward Herman, i.e. Richard Gilmore from Gilmore Girls. And while the scene itself and its placement in the narrative feels really random, with the right editing, it could have been an excellent scene. Well, I, I, I stand corrected. You're human. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. But you're not, are you? He asks the question that I've been asking this whole time. There is some concern in Washington regarding your criminal conduct. Some questions are being asked as to why you haven't been investigated and prosecuted. And of course, Edward Herman just nails his performance as this like very sweet Southern Senator with a hidden agenda. And 
that's kind of what kills me about this, is that if you ignore the sloppy editing and the bad writing, the performances are actually really good for what they've been given. And then, in like another sudden about face for this episode, Diana finds out that Willis, who seemed totally fine when we just saw him before, has apparently died. So naturally, this sends her on the warpath. <laughs> this plot is all over the place. Normally, in good stories, the characters drive the action through their decisions and choices and feelings. And then, in kind of messy stories, the plot will drive the action through a series of contrivances. But I don't even know what's driving the action here. So these very bulked up dudes are waiting in the lab because Veronica Kale has accurately predicted that Wonder Woman is going to come and bust down the door any minute. Their goal, which we're told twice in short succession, is to prevent Wonder Woman from getting to the infirmary. If she discovers our infirmary, all of us will be going to jail. Under no circumstances do we allow her to reach the infirmary. Of course, as everyone predicted, Wonder Woman busts open the door, and I notice something. Suddenly, we have pantsless Wonder Woman. Her costume has changed. In every previous scene where we've seen her dressed as Wonder Woman, she has long pants. And now, for no reason, she has a bodice and bare legs. Why? Why? Is it so we can get this crotch shot a little later? We also learn that the bad guys can't count. If there's one of you and 20 of us. Yeah, there's like 10 of them. Maybe 11. You see the strings on the actors during the fight, which is just further evidence that the editing on this wasn't complete. I'm not sure if this pilot would have been the actual first episode that would have aired if NBC would have picked up the series, you know, just with the editing completed, because it's not uncommon for shows to film a pilot episode as sort of a test or an example of what the show would be like if it were given the green light. Some people use the terms pilot and first episode interchangeably, but sometimes the pilot is not actually intended to be the first episode of a series. And it's not uncommon for shows to reshoot pilots after getting picked up, sometimes because so much time has passed between filming the pilot and when filming would begin for the series, that they've had to recast certain roles, or change certain sets, or because they have, like, an actual budget now. I think of Gilmore Girls when they recast both Dean and Suki in between filming the actual pilot and when the series shooting began. So yes, that means that Gilmore Girls also has a secret unaired pilot out there, which I have also seen. It's basically the same as the first episode we actually got, just with, you know, some different faces. So there's a chance that certain stilted, awkward elements of this, like the weird conversation that Wonder Woman had with Veronica Kale, are the result of this episode essentially being a first draft, and they would have reshot it completely before going to air. But even if that were the case, they probably wouldn't have rewritten it. The basic premise would have remained the same. And they did put enough effort into this pilot to track down Dr. Phil and film his guest appearance. And the outfit? I mean, let's strut your stuff, I get that, but let's face it, the girl is a little nuts. Anyway, so Wonder Woman just completely kicks the asses of these 20 guys. She kills one dude, like, for sure. And then Wonder Woman kicks down a door to find Veronica Kale, who says this. You are about to meet your equal, Wonder Woman. The American criminal justice system. It's even better since Elizabeth Hurley is British. 
And then, because this show likes to confuse me by going from horrible dialogue to small character moments that I actually kind of like, Wonder Woman just rolls her eyes and proceeds to physically attack Veronica. I can't tell what the one-liner is, though, that she says right here. Wanna feel my muscle? Wanna feel my muscle? I, I can't tell. I want it to be something that I can interpret in a dirty way to further um, my observation of the chemistry between these two characters, but I literally can't understand what she says. Wonder Woman knocks Veronica unconscious, although it's not really clear how, and then she goes into the infirmary, which turns out to just be full of sad, lumpy guys. I'm one of the good guys, and um, we're gonna take care of you. The cops also show up, since Wonder Woman attacking made this a crime scene so they can enter without a warrant, which is kind of smart. Veronica Kale is arrested, which narratively doesn't make sense if you're trying to set up conflict for an entire season, because now your arch nemesis is locked away. It would have been more interesting if Wonder Woman got to the infirmary and found it empty, and then Veronica Kale walked free. Also, if her drug is designed to create super soldiers in a lab, why was it being sold as a recreational drug on the street for Willis to buy that caused him to bleed from the eyeballs? Wonder Woman returns to her office victorious and Everyone claps. Literally. We love you, Wonder Woman. Are these her employees? Hey everybody, back to work. I guess they are. And I guess they're working at nighttime. Then a lawyer from the Justice Department arrives, which had been a threat that the senator had lobbed at her earlier over dinner. And Wonder Woman decides that she is going to greet this lawyer in a red satin robe. That's how I conduct all of my lawyer meetings. I'm just like, I want to be comfortable. And they're all like, ma'am, we're just trying to figure out how you want to distribute your assets if you die. And then the lawyer turns out to be Steve Trevor. Whoa, there's literally no reason for this. Anyway, Steve Trevor tells her, don't worry, I've got your back. Everything will be fine in my official report. But wouldn't people know that he and Diana used to be in a relationship? And that there might be some sort of conflict of interest here? And we find out that Steve actually moved to LA six months ago and didn't tell Diana. He's also married now. He fidgets in a really obvious way with his wedding ring to draw attention to it. Oh, I, yeah, I, I got married. Look, Diana, look. Look at my marriage ring, a symbol of the fact that I am now married. Afterwards, Diana goes back to her bangs and glasses apartment, and she decides to fill out what I assume is supposed to be a dating profile, but it just looks like she sets her status to single on Facebook, and she lists her only friend as Sylvester, which is the name of her cat. But... She is a very beautiful woman in a major city. I don't see why she would have trouble finding dates or finding friends if she actually wanted to, like if she actually had the time to do that. There's no reason that she would have to fill out a dating profile or update her Facebook status in this really resigned and heavy sort of way. The episode ends with Diana watching the news, and the anchor says that if she could be Wonder Woman for just one day, then she would be happy. So they say, if I could just be her for a day, I'd be happy. Just for a day. 
But we, the audience, see Wonder Woman herself sitting there, clearly unhappy. So I see what they were going for here. They missed the mark entirely. But I kind of see what they wanted to do. Adrienne Palicki could have been a great Wonder Woman, physically fitting the role, but also thematically different from the adaptations that we've seen before. And Elizabeth Hurley was just so magnetic that you were almost able to forget that the dialogue that she was saying was just so very stupid. The rest of the supporting cast also did the absolute best that they could with what little they had to work with. Unfortunately, all of the foundational and story elements were just so poorly thought out. The writing was really sloppy as well. Even if they had reshot the pilot to smooth out all of the rough edges, I can't imagine what an entire season of this show would have even been like. Some things are just better left unfinished. Now let's see if Warner Brothers shuts down this video. She has brought our shame into the light. She must be destroyed. That's, that's what I imagine that um, Warner Brothers studio executives sound like. <laughs>